Hi guys, this is Maria from InsightfulAstrology.com. Welcome to your June monthly forecast. And you might have noticed I'm doing these videos a little bit different this month in the interest of time. And to make sure that I get them out to you, I am consolidating signs. In, in this video, we'll have Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. And so if somebody would be kind enough to timestamp the videos so that each sign can just get to their video and move on with life, that would be great and very much appreciated. So of course, if you want to connect with me personally in a consultation, just click the link in the description box below and you and I will be talking very soon. So now, Sagittarius, what a monumental month you have ahead. And I am not exaggerating. I'm just not. I'm telling you, it's eclipse season. You're coming out of the gate on June 5th with an eclipse in your sign. And that eclipse is exactly opposite Venus, which is retrograde in your partnership sector. So yes, Sagittarius, the theme is relationship. This is a dynamic and emotionally charged relationship turning point for you. Do I want to get back together with this person? Do I want to get in a relationship with this person? Do I want to get out of a relationship with this person? These are questions that you're asking and answering. It's happening at the eclipse. The eclipse is it's when it's the moment has arrived. It's time. Okay. It's, it's D-Day. <laughs> Literally, it's D-Day. The event will occur in the relationship very close to this June 5th eclipse for you. And it could be your personal relationship, but it could also be a business relationship. So keep that in mind. Now, Mercury will go retrograde in June from June 18th until July 12th. And the retrograde happens in your eighth house, which is a money house. You are revising finances in an important way. And this is a perfect time to take another look at your investment portfolio. Look into your retirement plan. Are you, is it on point or do you have some work to do? Do you need to get a, a, a will or some kind of estate planning fixed, polished up? Do you want to refinance your house? Do you want to look at your debt and maybe consolidate everything into one? It's, it's a time to take a very thorough look because Mercury retrograde calls your attention to something you missed in the past and it makes you see it so that you could fix it. And so what you've missed in the past has something to do with eight house money and you're going to see it and then you're going to fix it during this retrograde. And that's, that's a good thing. Now, I, I want to also mention that there's a solar eclipse on the 21st in the same area of your chart. So that suggests a new beginning in an eighth house matter. But this new beginning comes at a time of confusion or delay, uncertainty, or it comes from whatever it is that you're fixing. Whatever you're fixing opens up a new opportunity for you financially. And that's a good thing. So aside from that, Venus is going to go direct on the 25th in your partnership sector. Huge. Again, relationship and love is a big theme for you this month in so many ways, three different ways. We'll get to the third one in a minute. But Venus going direct in your partnership sector says, okay, I'm ready for harmony. I'm ready for enjoyment now in this relationship. Bring it. Let's see, let's see how good it can get. And if it's your personal relationship, then you've likely restored harmony with the person. If you've decided to enter into a relationship with this person, it looks like it's going to be really good. You might be entering into a business relationship. And if that's the case, the financial element of it is going to be highlighted in a positive way for you by the end of the month when Venus goes direct. Now, Mars, the planet of action, energy, and assertive drive enters your fifth house on the 27th. And Mars is going to be here until January. That's a really long time, Sagittarius, because eventually in September, Mars will go retrograde. But for now, Mars is direct, full force in your fifth house. And that means energy is now being given and priority is being given to fifth house matters, to your children your love life, to your creative energies. Mars is libido and sex and the fifth house is romance. So if you've had a dry spell, 
in the sex department, it's over. It's obviously going to be over because Mars is going to be here for a long time. Okay. And so since relationship is so highlighted for you, I, I don't believe too many Sagittarians out there are single or have nothing going on in their love life. Not with all this eclipses, the Venus retrograde going direct and then Mars going in the fifth house. You're meeting someone if you're single. There is sex on the horizon for you, definitely in July. I mean, guys, this is, you're motivated to do something about your love life, finally. And because of that, you have the courage to go after love. And you're likely to get that. You're likely to get what you want. When Mars is in your fifth house, you're going to get, Mars is how you get what you want. And Mars in your fifth house says, I'm getting love. I'm going to get what I want with my kids. So there could be some arguments with kids. You know, maybe they're testing the waters a little bit, but you, you've got a handle on it. You definitely have the upper hand and you'll, you'll take care of it. Now, if there's a creative project that you want to start, do it after Mars enters this part of your chart because you will do very well with it. All right. Now, Capricorn, let's talk about you. Holy cow. Lunar eclipse in your hidden 12th house on the 5th against Venus retrograde in your 6th house. I think this is very much about uh, some kind of a necessary ending with a work-related matter that you knew you had to revise your plan on. And it could come at a little bit of a financial loss. Not going to lie, it's possible. Could be a little bit of a financial loss, or it could just be you say walking away. That's that's what I want to say. I feel like you're walking away from work, something with work, or you're walking away from someone that works with you or for you, and you have to do this to preserve your mental health, your well-being. And that's just the way it is. Now, Mercury is going to go retrograde in your partnership sector on the 18th and stays retrograde till July 12th. This is business partnerships. This is clients. If you see clients, this is your husband or wife if you're married or in a committed relationship. So yeah, it looks like you and your partner are not on the same page with certain decisions that have to be made for the benefit of your family or with real estate. And if this is business, then again, you're not on the same page. You both have a different idea of what will bring you security. And that's the root of the problem because this is cancer. So that's emotional security. So you both have different ideas of what it is going to take to bring this emotional security to each of you. And you have to find a way to balance that. And to, you know, if you're in a marriage or partnership to have, make sure that both of you get that. And again, the same is true if you're in a business partnership. Now there is a new beginning. There is a new beginning because on the 21st, there's a solar eclipse in your partnership sector. So that's beautiful. And I do see the fresh start. I do see moving forward with this person. So it could be a brand new business relationship that comes at a time where you're very confused about, is this going to bring me security? And it might be a slow development in the business relationship. So that's possible. This could be you making a commitment to someone in your personal life. I'm going to move in with you. Let's get engaged. Let's get married. All of that's very possible with a solar eclipse in your partnership sector. But with Mercury retrograde, you probably talked about this before. This is nothing new. It's not like you're just going to have this whirlwind, oh, let's get married. No, this, is, this has been talked about and discussed and possibly tabled in the past. And now you're ready to move forward with it. Okay. So Venus goes direct in your sixth house on the 25th. That's when harmony gets really restored for you in sixth house matters. And any issues that you've had with colleagues, it's, it's melting away. Two revenue streams at least are opening up with work. You're happier with the work that you're doing. It does seem to be positive. And if there's any health situation going on for you, you're finding the right health care providers and treatment plans. And you're willing to spend the money on it. It's not that it's going to bankrupt you in any way, but you seem to be willing to invest in your health, in your well-being, and in anything that's going to make your schedule and your daily routine more harmonious. And that's happening. 
So Mars will enter your fourth house of home family real estate at the end of the month on the 27th. Mars is going to be here, Capricorn, until January. That's a very long time. And the reason why that's happening is because in mid-September, Mars will go retrograde. So for now, Mars is strong and direct. And moving into your fourth house could bring some conflict with family, could be the best way to direct this. I always tell people, do some kind of renovation project at home or in real estate. This is when you want to hire the contractors and do the renovations and get going, do, do something yourself. Actually, it's even better because you're discharging all the physical energy that you have now in fourth house matters and leaving less room for conflict between you and relatives. Then on the 30th, Jupiter and Pluto are conjunct in your sign. And that's a very empowering connection. See, Pluto intensifies what it touches and what it's intensifying is your belief in your own capacity for growth. So you have an enormous amount of confidence as the month ends, Capricorn, that you're using in a very wise and strategic way to grow the way that you want to. So good for you. That's awesome. And that is your June. Okay. Let's talk about Aquarius. Maple behind me is an Aquarius, if you don't know that. She's sleeping now, but when I was filming Aries and Taurus and Gemini, oh my gosh, she was barking up a storm and playing. Now she's exhausted. <laughs> so Aquarius, a lunar eclipse is happening on the 5th in your friendship sector. And this is probably going to bring an emotional situation between you and one of your friends to a head. Sometimes you decide to break up with a friend when this energy happens in your 11th house. But it could also be that one of your friends is going through something very emotional and you're trying to help this person around this time period. You know, it could be, it could be anything. It could be one of your friends has been trying to have a baby and, and something happens or, and they're really heartbroken or they're suffering a breakup or one of your friends gets a big disappointment with a goal that they've been trying to pursue and you're just trying to be there for this, this person. Now, Mercury will go retrograde on the 18th until July 12th in your sixth house of work and health. And with Mercury retrograde, you're going back to some old work that you do or used to do, and you're making it better. You're fixing it. You're editing. This is the time for polishing and editing. And you definitely want to review whatever projects you currently have on your desk that you're working on. You there's something that you missed. There's a mistake. There's an error. And you want to review it and you want to fix it. And you will. That's what a Mercury retrograde allows you to do. But there's also a solar eclipse in the same part of your chart on the 21st. So that suggests a brand new opportunity in work that comes from the past because Mercury is retrograde at the time of this eclipse. Or if it doesn't come from the past, this brand new opportunity is just delayed for a little while so that you can work out the kinks because there's a little confusion about how to implement the plan in this new work matter. But it does look like if you are looking for new work or freelance assignments, it's coming in a big way the end of the month at this eclipse. So now what else is happening is Venus is turning direct on the 25th and Venus is the planet of love and it has been retrograde in your true love sector, Aquarius. So what happens? All the X's show up when Venus is retrograde in your fifth house. Well, not all of them, but at least, at least, I want to say at least two. You might have talked to an ex on social media, reconnected with this person, or this person just passes by your house and says hello for whatever reason, or you run into them at the store. But it is equally possible that an ex wants an actual reconciliation, and you've been so confused about which way to go. Well, if that's the case, you'll have clarity as Venus goes direct. If you are in a relationship already, this could be about one of your children. Uh, confusion about how to spend, where to spend money on the kid. Um, what what do we invest in for this child? That is, you're working through that, or maybe a block on spending money on something that's really fun for you, a hobby that you have, 
this recreational activity that you love to do that you want to go back, you wanted to go back and spend money on, but you couldn't for whatever reason, now you're free to move forward and do that. And that's really cool because you get to do that now. So on the 27th, Aquarius, Mars will enter your third house of communication and stays there until the new year, a very long time. And with Mars in your message sector, you have the courage to speak up for yourself, the courage to negotiate a deal and get the terms that you want. You will not stop until you get what you want. Your mouth is a powerful weapon with Mars in the third house. Aquarius, use it wisely because your words can cut like a knife if this goes the wrong way. Be aware of that. You know, your temper is focused on your mouth and what you say. And you could lash out if you get angry about something and not mean it after, but you can't take it back once it comes out. So be aware of that. But overall, having Mars in your communication sector gives you a tremendous edge in all mental activities. So you'll learn faster. You'll think faster. You'll think on your feet. If you have to make decisions, you'll make them quickly. And you won't second guess yourself. You won't second guess your judgment with Mars in the third house. Okay, so that, my friends, Aquarius, is your June forecast. And I'm going to finish up now with Pisces. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Your career is definitely getting attention as the month begins. Because on June 5th, there is an eclipse, a lunar eclipse at the very top of your chart. This could be fulfillment. This could be you getting an honor, an award, recognition for your career. But it's an emotional transition or an emotional turning point. So if you are not where you are meant to be professionally, this could be you letting go of your career path, walking away, leaving the career. This, And if it's not you, it could be your boss or someone you report to that is retiring or leaves and disappears in some way. Abandoning a goal or the attainment of a goal. It's like one or the other at this eclipse. So now Mercury will turn retrograde on June 18th <coughs> and remains retrograde until July 12th. Mercury is going to be retrograde in your fifth house. And this is love. And yes, Pisces, there could be some confusing decisions ahead about love. Information might come to light that you didn't know about before that makes you say, what? I mean, literally somebody can come out of the woodwork and say, Pisces, I love you. I'm in love with you. I've been in love with you all along. Or one of your exes can come back and want to reconcile or at least want to talk. Any of this is possible. It's also possible that if you have any children, there's going to be some miscommunication and some aggravation when you talk to them around this time period. Obviously, you have to fit in the age of the child. If you're dealing with a teenager, this is going to be more annoying. If you're dealing with a, you know, a three-year-old or a four-year-old, it could just be on that level, some kind of difficulty with uh, communication or getting them to listen. Now, a solar eclipse happens on the 21st in the same area of your chart. So what that means is if you are totally single, it does look like this is new love for you. And the new love comes from you reevaluating outworn ideas and perceptions about love because Mercury is also retrograde. Or the new love comes from an old source, somebody coming back that you do choose to reconcile with. That's possible. The solar eclipse might have to do with children. Maybe you're having a baby. Maybe you're going to find out you're having a baby or you're going to decide that you want to try again for a baby. Or this could be a new beginning for a creative project because the fifth house does rule creativity. So you might start a creative project. It, it, it'll take a while to get off the ground because Mercury is retrograde, but there is that new beginning. And I do see the clear path for you after Mercury turns direct. Now, Venus turns direct on June 25th, and Venus will turn direct in your home and family sector. So, harmony is restored once again uh, at home. Beautiful. If you have been wanting to make changes to your home, do a decorating project, a renovation, aesthetically, 
buying furniture, hiring a decorator, this is when you should be doing it after Venus turns direct. You don't necessarily want to do it when Venus is retrograde because you might not be happy with the result. But now that Venus is direct, by the end of the month, you can move forward with any of those projects. Mars, the planet of assertive drive, enters Aries, which is his home sign, and enters your second house of earned income, possessions, and talents on the 27th. In Pisces, Mars is staying there for a long time until January of 2021. What does this mean for you? Well, you're going to become more assertive about pursuing income opportunities. You'll be more entrepreneurial, and that's fantastic. But it is also possible that your expenses are going to be aggravated and that you're going to be annoyed at having to put money into making money. And that's common especially with Aries, you know, Aries is entrepreneurial and second house is where you make money, but Mars tends to aggravate expenses. So what's the expense? The expense has to do with making money. So you literally have to, it takes money to make money, but you're going to be pissed off about that, but you're going to have to do it anyway, that kind of a thing, circling over and over again for you for many months. It's going to be a big theme, Pisces. And I do want to mention that on the 13th, Mars and Neptune will be conjuncting your sign. So although Mars goes into Aries on June 27th, before June 27th, Mars is still in your sign, Pisces. And the conjunction to Neptune on the 13th can absolutely be your ability to take inspired action to realize a personal dream, a personal aspiration. It is the quintessential aspect of making my dream come true. So whatever that means for you, Pisces, you have the ability to do that right around the 13th. And I want you to go for it and crush your goals and get it because you should. All right. So thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you all have a spectacular June. And remember, if I can help you in a personal consultation, do not hesitate to click the link in the description box below. And you and I will be talking very soon. Happy June, everyone. I love you all.